So you've got a lot of data in your SQL Server and you want to search it using some sort of substring. But oh no, it's super slow. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, I am going to tell you all sorts of things about SQL Server which are probably wrong and I'm hoping that people will correct me in the comments later, but let's just go with it for now uh, and talk about it. So I have a table here that has a bunch of records in it. I don't know how many records are on this table. Let's see. We got, uh, what is that, 2.5 million million. records here in this table. Um, so that is enough records that just searching them can be a little bit slow. Um, and these records are funny, they just have a single column called hang tag in them. Uh, but the scenario that I have here is that users of my application want to be able to search for these hang tag things. and because I assume they're incredibly lazy people. They don't want to write the entire hang tag out. Um, they just want to be able to search for like the beginning of the hang tag. Uh, so somewhere in this giant collection of data is a hang tag called test something. So they might search for it uh, just by giving me TES. Uh, so in my back end, I'm searching for uh, TES and then this little symbol here, which means give me anything. Uh, SQL. Uh, but this is, as it turns out, like not a particularly quick sort of query to run in SQL Server uh, because it ends up going through every single record and comparing those records. Um, when you get two and a half million records, that can take a little bit of time, um, especially in the database because they're not sorted or anything. So what you can do is you can add an index to this table and that helps a little bit. I'll get into it in a second, but we can uh, create index x on uh, load test and so that sort of index is going to improve performance for a certain subset of operations here against this table. Uh, so specifically ones where I have the entire hang tag are very quick or ones where I have the start of the hang tag. So basically this thing here is going to be a lot faster now that I have that index. So if it comes an idea, um, it executes pretty quickly in less time than I can really measure sensibly here. Um, and it is doing an index seek using that, which is a pretty good operation of what we would like. Um, but if I'm searching for, say, the end of this, so we know we have something called test, let's do EST, let's search for the beginning of it here. Um, this is a slightly slower operation. I mean, I'm fortunate that I have a lot of memory in a fairly fast computer here, so it probably runs this entire thing in memory. But you can see that the execution plan this run is completely different. So it is not able to use the index anymore uh, because it doesn't know what the start of the word is. Because we have the wildcard at the start here, uh, it has to change its execution plan. And instead, it does an entire table scan, which is like the worst thing in the world um, to do. It's probably the worst thing in the world, but it's not good. Uh, so I had this challenge of like, hey, people want to be able to enter the end of hang tags or the beginnings of hang tags can we improve performance on this? So I went down a huge rabbit hole thinking, I will use full text indexing on this. I have heard of full text indexing before, uh, and I have played with it before, but I never really got too deep into it. Um, so I spent a bunch of time setting up a full text index on this, uh, and I, I'll probably put up a blog post on how to add full text indexing. Uh, only to discover that it doesn't do what I was hoping it would do. Um, I was hoping that it would be able to find like the ends of words like this for me. But it turns out full text indexing does what's called tokenization. Um, so this is. So what full text indexing will speed up is if I search for something like this is a text. 
it'll work much more quickly because behind the scenes, it knows that spaces are special characters uh, in the English language and it splits up the string into kind of tokens like this is our test thing. And it makes searching for those strings or like strings which are on word boundaries much faster. So full text index would make this a lot faster, but it doesn't help my original case of something where I have a lot. So I spent a lot of time setting up full text indexing and that didn't really solve my problem. Uh, so I thought about this a little bit more and I came up with what I like to think is is an absolutely glorious hack here. Uh, and what I ended up doing was this. Oh, test add. Um, back. I, I, I knew this is where you were going as soon as you yeah. said it was a brilliant hack. <laughs> uh, so I added another column here, which is the reverse of the hang tag so that I can index that column and then search it the other way around. Uh, so I'll just put a quick hack on this one. So I'll just do that in uh, a test set this hashtag equal to um, ESET. Took me a second to get my head around. Bang. And then I can create an index on this first hang tag. And then what I can do up here is I can search for that reverse hang tag by just doing like uh, TSE. Here. Uh, and execution plan here is back to doing index seeks on this. So it ends up being pretty quick again. Now, if you're thinking about this concept and feeling a little dirty, all viewers of today's episode will receive a free shower. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, then for, for our particular scenario, this ended up being a great solution and just in case you weren't feeling dirty enough already uh, the way I populated this is I used a trigger um, so that anytime <laughs> somebody changes oh. the original column I add an, awesome. I, uh, append a reverse version of that field to it as well um, so this is just an interesting way of kind of thinking about the data and solving it in a kind of roundabout sort of way but I, I mean, it works and it is very quick, but the, the place where it falls down is, of course, if somebody tries to search for something like SE, but uh, I got buy-in from the business that they didn't care about that particular scenario. So uh, there we go. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, much, that's pretty much all you can say about it, James. <laughs> So what are what are some other um, strategies for tackling this end of word kind of scenario then? Um, I don't know, really. I mean, so I was thinking about looking at something like Elasticsearch um, to, to give you an idea of how crazy my scenario was getting here. I was like, maybe I can feed the data into Elasticsearch and I can use Elasticsearch to, to search for these terms as well. But Elasticsearch is like the same problem. Um, the full text yeah, kind of idea. More of that problem, yeah. So they do full text indexing as well. Um, now, if you if you're doing something like Elasticsearch, there's a bunch of other strategies that they can use to make their searches a little bit more intelligent. Um, so one of the things that a lot of search engines do is a concept called stemming. So stemming is you take a word like testing, uh, and when you're indexing it, you stem this word. So you find like the root word, which would be test. So this means that now if you search for test or you search for testing, you're going to find the same set of documents because we like those fuzzy results. Yeah. Um, and then another thing that kind of bigger search engines do would be like synonyms. Um, 
So they will search for, you know, words which are the, have the same meaning uh, or words which are very similar, like hot and heat might end up being things that you would search for together. Uh, so that's another approach that people take. And then also there ends up being a lot of like characters or words you end up dropping when you're doing these full text indexing. So things like is and are and, and tend not to be very useful words. Um, so when people are doing searches in Google or Yahoo or something like that, whatever the cool kids are using these days, they're doing their searching, Bing, maybe. Um, Ask Jeeves. Yeah, these words are not particularly useful, so you end up kind of like deleting them, dropping them, and then just searching for the, the keywords that come in between those. So there's all sorts of interesting strategies around searching, and I'm sure my knowledge on it is like a decade out of date, I'm sure that the Googles and Bings of the world are coming up with really cool ways of using natural language processing in a more advanced way to improve people's searches. Uh, I mean, honestly, searching searching the web has never been the hard problem. Ranking the results has been the hard problem. It's easy to find documents, but then the problem is you find too many. You got to find some way to trickle those that are important or pertinent up to the top of that pile. Very cool. All okay, right. well, thank, so, thank, thank you for apps. sharing this. <laughs> thank you for yeah. sharing this. I a trigger and um, a column hack, so that's good. Everyone earned their shower. Yes, indeed. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us on this We Give Terrible Advice episode of the ASP Death Monsters. Uh, remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody next week. Cheers. Bye.